Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Skip Gorman. He's online. Here. Thank you. Uh, David Couch. Here. Jim Crichton. Here. John Crump. Here. Jeff Flores. Here. Catherine Carr. Here. Orshel Cryer. Here. Michael Navarro. Here. Cindy Parra. I'm here. Maria Perez. Here. Kathy Prout. Here. Susanna Reyes. Here. Gilbert. Gilberto Reyna. Here. Bob Smith is absent. Phil Smith. Here. Veronica Vasquez. Here. And Malcolm Warney. Here. And just so you all know, this is a full house except for two people. Yeah. So can you imagine two more chairs around this table? <laughs> Not really. Okay, thank you. Item three is public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on the agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. We try to keep our comments to two minutes or less. Is there anyone that would like to make a public comment tonight? Please come to the microphone and state your name and we'll proceed. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is um, Francisco Martinez. I'm president of the Mettler County Water Board. I'm here to basically speak on behalf of the community of Mettler. I just had a quick discussion with Mr. Navarro, and he kind of clarified some of my concerns about making public. Um, my some of the concerns some of the communities are, want to address, because we have a casino being built, is the size and efficiency of the roundabouts that will be utilized as interest points also to keep, you know, traffic going. These roundabouts are on Sabadan Road and Highway 166 and Valpredo Road, I believe, and Sabadan. So, you know, we just heard rumors of semis struggling in some areas <laughs> getting through and and we just want to make sure uh, there's not going to be no problems. Mr. Novato kind of explain what they utilize, you know, you know, to, to for the size of the of the um, you know roundabouts. So my next concern was um, we've been, we've had an ongoing discussion with the casino, and our concerns are in the Miller community right now at this time. Going through the community, there's a shortcut to the casino site instead of utilizing the entrance ways of 166 and Sabadan and Valparaiso Road and Sabadan. So they've assured us, no, we understand. We don't want traffic and stuff like that, what's been happening? So my, my next question was, is what agency do I do to address concerns about, or do I tell the casino, hey, you don't, don't allow construction folks to go through Mettler. So I'm, I got Mr. Novato's um, card, I'll follow up. So the next concern is using, is basically all kinds of construction <laughs> cutting through the community of Mettler, which we don't want. Um, that's basically it. So I, Mr. Novato kind of, brought me up to date a lot of things, and uh, I thank him, and I got his card. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. I would think that county roads could probably okay. assist you as well. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Well, I'm not good at this. Hi, I'm Jay with Bike Bakersfield. Um, I'm just wanting to give you guys an update for May and June for our accomplishments. Um, as of right now, we do have some staff updates. Um, I'm the new event coordinator, and Michael Parra has transitioned to the program manager. Um, Tony Renteria will no longer be with us. Um, we did get a new hire, Hugh Holmes, who will join our team this month. Um, we have our May bike highlights um, are the KRV, which is Kern River Valley Streets Mock City event, which is teaching kids just how to navigate real life situations, but in a controlled environment on a smaller scale. Um, we have community rides in all of our DACs, the disadvantaged communities. Um, Oildale right now is one of our biggest ones that we've got going on. Um, people do come out it's really fun it, and if you guys get bored and want to come out find us online and uh you know sh show some support uh the last one for me was a ride of silence led by our member our uh, board member louis bravo um that honors every fallen cyclist internationally through the world everyone gets together in solidarity um so that one was really good for june we just recently did an e-bike demonstration in arvin for our clean and clean arvin's clean air energy fair um, which was showcased and educated by public on e-bike utility. Um, we did a community day partnered with Bakersfield Police Department. We demonstrated e-bikes. Everyone was out there at Jefferson Park. It was really nice. I mean, tons of people, tons of engagement. Everyone got to have a really good time. 
Um, we're still doing uh, rodeo and maintenance clinics as well with Wasco. Um, Wasco actually is a huge turnout. Huge. I mean, the kids always, always. Wasco's an amazing man. I love working there. But, yeah, no, we did over 30 bikes. They donated all kinds of stuff. Kids got to raffle off. It is really nice. Um, I just want to thank you guys and your support and participa participation at, with the activities that we have been doing with all the communities in Kern County. I thank you guys so much for that. Um, other than that, that's all I really got to say. Thank you, Jude. Maybe one question. Will you be at the um, bike ride um, later this month, I believe, on the 27th? The Wasco one? Yeah. I believe so. If I won't be, um, my coworker Michael will be there. But if I've got time, I will. I mean, I, I, I work a lot. I work a lot. But, yeah, no, Wasco is usually my favorite one. You get, someone always comes out, even if it's at the smallest. We still have a really good time. The community is really tight. It's a nice place. I ain't got to worry about getting ran over. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Any other public comments tonight? Seeing none, we'll go to item four. A through F is the consent agenda. And all these items are considered to be routine and non-controversial by current Cox staff, and we'll act on those all in one motion unless someone wants to make a comment or ask a question. Anyone here, either public or council, want to make a comment or ask a question about anything on the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll return. Motion. We have a motion. Second. A second. Need a roll call? Malcolm Warning. Yes. Veronica Vas Vasquez? Yes. Phil Smith? Yes. Gilberto Reyna? Yes. Susanna Reyes? Yes. Kathy Proud? Yes. Maria Perez? Yes. Cindy Parra? Yes. Michael Navarro? Yes. Orshel Cryer? Yes. Jeff Flores? Yes. John Crump? Yes. Jim Crichton? Yes. David Couch? Yes. And Skip Gorman? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That takes us to item five, which is the 2023 Federal Transportation Improvement Program draft amendment number 17. We're going to have a public hearing here, but we have staff comments. Yes. <clears throat> Good afternoon, board, chair, members of the board. Amendment 17 to the 2023 FTIP Active Transportation Enhancement Activities Program. The amendment was circulated to the Technical Advisory Committee June 7th. At this time, I ask the board to open the public hearing, hear public comments, and close the public hearing. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. So. We'll open the public hearing and ask if there's anyone here that would like to make any comments on this item. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, return it to the board. This Thank is you. for information only. There's no action. No. That was item five. Item six, there is none. Caltrans report is item seven. Good evening. Who goes first? Your Roche and Bell? I'll go ahead and go first. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members of the board. Uh, a few updates. So first, Clean California, as, as we've indicated before, is winding down then this fiscal year. But I do want to congratulate Kern County on their Lost Hills Park uh, beautification uh, ribbon cutting they had this past week. Um, I wasn't able to attend, but I heard a lot of great things about it. And staff was really impressed with the playground equipment, everything that was put out there. So congratulations on that. A um, couple active projects. I uh, want to continue to update on the State Route 204 road diet project. As previously indicated, that was awarded to a contractor. There was a 90-day delay start when they work on the, getting the art approved. So we're thinking, I think they're 30 days into the 90-day delay start, so about 60 days out from starting construction. Um, and then it's 70 working days, so that project will be complete by the end of the year. Uh, work does continue as you've probably driven by the Garza Circle. Um, that project started construction, working on getting the art approved as well and that project is scheduled to be complete this fall. Um, briefly indicated as well the, uh, that Caltrans and, and KernCon collaborate on a State Route 9958 uh, grant application for that eighth and missing movement. Uh, so we are working internally and coordinating with headquarters on the opportunity to try and combine that with an upcoming shop project. Um, we're targeting trying to get that wrapped up by um, this October, which coincides with the CTC meeting that will be held here in Bakersfield. And the meanwhile, we are continuing to actually look for additional grant funding opportunities. We're working with headquarters on, on submitting this for SB1 for the Trade Corridor Enhancement Program for the upcoming cycle. Uh, I want to make you aware of HSIP Cycle 12 call for projects that went out 
last month. Applications are due in September, so my team's been reaching out to coordinate on potential applications. These projects can be on-site or off-site. I mean, on-site or off-site, sorry. Off-system or on-system. Um, and they're set aside for things like guardrail, pedestrian crossing enhancements, bike improvements, et cetera. So if any of your agencies would like to um, coordinate on, on an application or need some guidance, please feel free to reach out to me or my team to make that happen. As for projects, uh, a couple of updates. So the old US 99, the white lane on State Route 99 rehab project, project is wrapping up. We're about 98% complete. Just wrapping up some punch list items on that project. Uh, the Delano State Route 155 rehab, it's a project we'll be doing, adding some bike lanes as part of a rehab project as well as some other complete streets elements. Uh, that project is, is kind of a long lead. We hope to have that project ready to advertise by next June. Um, we're working on a, a CNM agreement with the railroad for that project. So that's kind of holding us up a little bit. Uh, State Route 46, uh, segment 4C, construction continues to progress. Contractor is working on uh, mainline paving. Uh, that project, we're looking at doing a, uh, a ribbon cutting here, and I think we're targeting August. We got August 26th or September 3rd were the last dates I heard. Uh, same location as the uh, the groundbreak we had with, according with Lost Hill School District. So talking to our public information office today, they, they plan to start reaching out as soon as tomorrow to start coordinating and inviting elected officials for that up came, upcoming uh, ribbon cutting. Let's see, California Aqueducts, they were at 168 Bridge Rehab Project. Uh, plan to award the contract uh, in August. There will be about a nine-month delayed start while the team pursues encroachment permits with DWR. So we're looking at probably construction starting on that project in uh, May of next year. Uh, work continues out at Maricopa, the rehab project, uh, State Route 33. Um, doing some culvert work out there, and as anticipated, there'll be some weekend closures starting uh, in July. And that completes my report. Happy to answer any questions. <coughs> Questions before we go? Sure. <laughs> um, I just want to say I've ridden through that Garza Circle and it's not even done yet, but with those median, with those pork chop medium. Like the splitter islands they put in there? Man, it feels it totally does. different already just riding the bike through that area right now. That's going to be, once it's done, it's going to be great. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was pleasantly surprised driving into that. I come in that way from uh, from 99, and, and yeah, it tightens up the function more yeah, like a traditional like roundabout, this, much more calming. You know, going on. So and there's some pedestrian walkways through there that they install. So yeah, it's looking good. It's coming yeah, along nice. It's going to be nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Smith, that uh, Highway 58 project uh, by Tower Line Roads coming along. Any? It looks like they're moving the K rail to get the inside lane now. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I do not have an update on, on that project, but I could I could shoot you an email. That's okay. Uh, just the comment that it's coming along looks great. Good. That's good. the one I was complaining about <laughs> yeah, for, for a few years. Uh, <laughs> and it's now... Like 20. Uh, no, not 20. <laughs> no, not on that one. No, it's after you were here, Michael. So, yeah. uh, but it looks really good. good. The only curious note I had on that, the outside lane, or the right lane, was the one that was the worst shape, but they did the inside lane first. But anyway, there had to be some logic to it, I'm sure. But anyway... Hopefully. It's looking well. Good. It's looking really good. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? I do. Good. I do. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Member Reyes. Right. Do you have an update on Highway 2, State Highway 223 in Arvin for the two projects that are pending? 223. So we have, I do actually. So 223, so um, the, the one longer lead project where we're doing the rehab project and the complete streets projects. So that one we wrapped up environmental on May 14th and we're starting design this summer. So that's when we're doing the rehab project on 223 and we're doing some bowl ballots and a pedestrian signal, et cetera. And so that project will advertise uh, summer of next year and then kick off construction, be awarded in the fall. Um, as far as the, the Clean California one, uh, I know the team reached out and they were coordinating with city staff. They gave an update to the council, I was told, and they're still working on, I guess, the, the, some of the irrigation equipment, I think, before they could do the tree planting. So they haven't scheduled the, I'll say, the uh, the groundbreaking, which was supposed to coincide with the completion of the irrigation and then uh, a tree planting event. 
So I don't have an update on when that they expect that to occur. All right, good evening. This is the report for District 9. Uh, there's two uh, construction projects uh, tentatively scheduled to begin in July. The first is the State Route 58 to Hatchaby Median Safety Devices Project, where uh, we'll remove and replace median terminal stations, crash cushions, and the Midwest Guard Grill on, uh, on 58, and it will start at uh, State Route 202, uh, over crossing to the business 58 over crossing and it should take about a month and a half to complete uh, the second project for July it'll it'll start a little later in July are is the Kern dig outs and slab replacements project and uh, these uh, the dig outs and slab replacements will happen at various locations on 58 from just east of Beauville Road to the San Bernardino County line so in other words the whole uh, segment of, of 58 in District 9. The Kern Lighting Project has been paused to October, and that is uh, Kern Lighting Replacement, and it will be updating the lighting on, again, uh, State Route 58 at the Tehachapi Boulevard overpass. And finally, um, as uh, said, uh, Clean California is complete as of June 30th. And there's two remaining projects uh, that we're that were in East Kern. Uh, we just had a ribbon cutting too, I guess, for the new park on Valley Boulevard in Tehachapi, and I was told it was a wonderful event. And uh, secondly, um, Mojave East Park has requested an extension, so it will be completed in uh, fall of 2024. So this fall. And that is it. Is there any questions? Could you put that photo up? There we go. Uh, I talked to uh, uh, Kristen about this, and this has been uh, this is a ongoing nuisance corner, south east corner of Highway 202 and Tatchby Woodford Road. Uh, this is what we get all summer long from the the winter. The mud goes there, and then onto the out into the pavement. To the east of there is about uh, about 100 feet from there is a drain that yeah. takes it under 202. So this doesn't have to, uh, you mentioned this, there's a larger project yes, slated for this? It's the Golden Hills Complete Street Project, which we just, com we're just completed the PID this month. The what? The, it, it, the um, P project oh. initiation document. Yes, okay. And um, so it's completed, but that means that, you know, it's still, I believe it's 20, 2029, 20, 2030 is when it will be ready to list for construction. So um, well, I I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll tell folks that use that just to uh, use another way. No, <laughs> here's what we need. Uh, this doesn't have to be part of a major project. This yeah. is a maintenance project. They could take a grader or a backhoe uh, several hundred feet up to the south there and get a, a better ditch to approach that corner and take it to the east to the drain and get the drain cleared out. So this is really a minor maintenance issue. It doesn't have to be a rework of, of everything, but you yeah. can see there in the wintertime, it's in the, and our only veterinary office is up the street there. So it gets kind of busy sometimes. That's the, um, the south east, east. corner, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Yes. I know that corner. So I've seen it. Good graphics sometimes, you know, sometimes it's just a, an address, but, but there you go. That's in the summer and the winter it's, it's flooded with mud. I agree. All right. I've seen it. If yes, you could bring will, it to someone's attention. I will I will bring word back to the district. <laughs> An interesting little sidebar on this. Uh, our city engineer called Caltrans and spoke to someone and it told him it was at uh, 202 and Woodford Road. And he said, oh, that's in Tehachapi. Get a hold of Jay Schlosser, who is our uh, city engineer. It's outside the city. But since, <laughs> anyway, they need to get out more, maybe, uh, you know, see, see where the boundaries are. <laughs> Anyway, that was a cute one. Okay. Uh, the other thing was uh, we were expecting some maybe some overpass improvements on State Route 58. Where so we're talking about some uh, um, uh, some uh, windscreens, especially on on Mill Street. That was Any the Mill Street overcrossing, <coughs> and yes. then uh, yeah, that is also. 
believe let me I'll get back to you on that on the dates on that project so I've I've heard I've yeah I'm not clear on the date right now okay. but I know that they've been talking and there's been work done okay uh, towards that yeah super and then I'll piggyback on what you were talking about we had several hundred people attend this Tatchby Valley Park uh, ribbon cutting which was from a grant from Clean California with uh, Caltrans it was a big thing. It was a little neighborhood, underserved neighborhood that doesn't have a, a neighborhood park. And it's got uh, a five, probably one of the first ones we know of, a five-a-side soccer. It's an indoor soccer. So you can, it's kind of like hockey, but you're using a, a soccer ball. And uh, it's really popular. So we gave away over 250 free soccer balls that day and, there, and ran out. So it was, it was quite a splash. And nice. thank you. Thank you. I'll end on a positive note, right? <laughs> Any other comments or questions from Ms. Carr? So um, I'll just say thank you. Please pass along our thanks for the Lost Hills uh, project. The community is really happy with that. And it's uh, those of you who haven't seen it, when you're going to the coast, stop and just check out everything that's been done in Lost Hills lately. It's, it's really nice. Anyway. Are there some kind of pilot equipment they said, like the new playground areas, some new equipment? Yes. But all the stuff that the wonderful company has done on top of that, there's a soccer field, a track, a community center, a, a bridge over Highway 46. It's, yeah, there's it, a lot of things that are happening. I can chair. Yeah. Chair. Um, yeah, I, they had their grand opening or their ribbon cutting for all the uh, new toys they have out there. It is amazing. They have this one area that is an interaction, interactive part of the park. And it plays music. You can hit certain like tambourine stuff, or you can hit like a xylophone. And and the kids there, it was it was packed yesterday, even after the the ribbon cutting. And that community really is just um, so fortunate to to be able to to have somebody that that really took uh, a hold over there and and wanted to do that. Um, we even had, we probably had eight kids on bikes and, and two uh, adults on three-wheelers uh, out there. So the, that park, it's amazing. It's things I've, I've never seen in any other park before. Okay, if there's no other comments, we'll go to uh, item eight, which is the executive director's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, I want to publicly thank uh, first our staff for uh, all the work they've done in submitting some recent applications to Senator Butler, Senator Padilla, Congressman Valadeo, Congressman Obernolte, and Congressman Fong. And uh, I'm expecting, after it goes through appropriations and the committees, that we'll bring in at least 20, maybe up to $40 million for, for three specific projects. And those projects are around about at 7 standard and um, 43, which both our senators and one of our congressmen supported. Um, the completion of the final movement at 99 and 58, which uh, at least one of our senators supported and two of our congressmen supported. And then finally in Eastern Kern, a connection that I've personally been working on for almost 12 years between Cal City Boulevard and Edwards Air Force oh, Base, wow. which uh, Congressman Obernolte supported. So one, our staff did a great job on relatively short notice putting these packages together. And this is uh, the first time we've had both of our senators and all three of our members of Congress support our projects. So I hope to have good news for you in the next few months as this moves forward. Over the past uh, month, we've continued to engage uh, on 99 and 58, like Michael has mentioned. I have a meeting tomorrow with the uh, head of Caltrans and uh, Senator Grove about that project. State Route 204, Union Avenue, 43 and 7 Standard. Uh, just today, we had a monthly meeting on State Route 46, I, and I will be there whenever the date is, Michael, in August. And Supervisor Couch was there when we uh, when we broke ground on that. <coughs> Truck climbing lanes on uh, State Route 58 continues to be a topic for location three and one. We're not giving up on 
the two other locations just because Caltrans agreed to fund one of them. And we continue to meet on a master planning of State Route 119. Oh, one more thing. Uh, next week, uh, Chairman Smith and I plan to attend the CTC meeting in Monterey, and I'll report back in uh, July how that goes. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Okay. Any questions for the director? Seeing none, we'll go to member statements. I know Member Parra has one. Yeah, I just wanted to say I'm sure most of you know that um, our CEO, Michael Tree, is no longer with us. Uh, a 30 plus year employee of ours uh, in maintenance, Chris James, has stepped into that position and he will fill that position until we decide when to either do a national search or he's in there long enough for us to, just to regroup and then we'll figure out what we're gonna, how we're gonna move forward. But we're gonna continue to move forward with a, a lot of our projects and um, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Any, anybody else? Okay, so we'll adjourn the Transportation Planning Policy Committee meeting and move into the current Council of Governments meeting. Roll call is the same. Item two is public comments. Is there anyone here who'd like to address the Council on any matter under our jurisdiction without any agenda tonight? Seeing none, I'll go to item three, which is the consent agenda, items A through D. We can act on those all in one motion. Is there anyone here that would like to Ask a question or pull any out of those items for a separate consideration. I don't see any, so I'll return it to the board for a motion. Motion on consent. Second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Gorman? Aye. Couch? Yes. Crichton? Yes. Crump? Yes. Flores? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Perez? Yes. Prout? Yes. Reyes? Yes. Reyna? Yes. Phil Smith? Yes. And Vasquez? Aye. We're good? We're good. Okay. Thank you. That passed. All eyes, I think. <laughs> okay. I Item four is the final Kern Cog fiscal year 2024 2025 financial plan. Becky? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, Kern Cog staff is pleased to submit for your review and approval the final Kern Cog annual financial plan for fiscal year 24 25. This plan is an estimate of the financial activity anticipated for the fiscal year stated in object, account, and line item format. The plan provide sufficient appropriations to fund all programs and projects documented in the fiscal year 2024-25 overall work program that you approved earlier this year. In summary, the final plan includes revenues of $8,640,988 and expenditures of $8,427,200. Total budgeted revenues are estimated to increase by 40.57% from the prior year proposed budget due to two large one-time climate ad adaptation grants, appropriations totaling 8,427,200 represent an increase of 33.48% over the prior year proposed budget primarily for consultant costs also related to the two large one-time climate ad adaptation grants. The grants include the Kern Area Regional Goods Movement Operations Climate Change Adaptation Mitigation Study, also known as Cargo CCAMS, which is currently underway, and the Kern Trans Sierra Transit Climate Adaptation Study. This grant has not been awarded, but Caltrans directed KernCog to include it in the OWP, therefore, it is included also in this budget. The proposed, the pro, proposed Kern COG annual financial plan for the 24-25 fiscal year continues to provide for the achievement of two major underlying object, objectives. First, the plan fulfills the council and staff obligations to maintain the region's federal and state certifications and thereby ensures the continued flow of resources to Kern Cog member agencies. 
And second, the plan provides for extensive direct services to KernCog member agencies in support of local efforts to serve the citizens of the Kern region. Staff recommends your council's favorable consideration. At this time, staff requests the chairman open the public hearing, receive comment, and close the public hearing, and the recommended action is to adopt the final Kern Cog fiscal year 2024-25 financial plan. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll open the public hearing and ask if there's anyone here that would like to speak on this. I don't see any, so we'll close the public hearing. We'll turn it to the board and the recommended action is to adopt the final COG by fiscal year 2024-2025 financial plan. Motion to adopt. A second. We'll call vote, please. Vasquez. Aye. Phil Smith. Yes. Gilberto Reyna. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Prout. Yes. Perez. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Flores. Yes. Crump. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Couch. Yes. And Gorman. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is the final Kern Motors Aid Authority fiscal year 2024-2025 financial plan. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Um, this plan pretty much mirrors the plan from last year. Uh, we are expecting revenues of $859,807 with expenditures of $665,285. This plan includes um, all of the debris and obstruction removal contracts that we have had in the past. Um, also some um, marketing for our 511 program and a little bit of staff time. Otherwise, it's, it's pretty much the same budget as last year. I have a question about it. Okay. Have our revenues gone down in the past few years? Uh, I think they've pretty much remained the same. Okay. So they, ha they haven't gone up substantially or anything like it's that. It's a dollar okay. per vehicle? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, I need to open a public hearing, so I'll do that. Is there anyone here that would like to comment on this particular item? Seeing none, I'll return it to the board for adoption of the final KMAA fiscal year 2024. Motion. Plan. Plan. Thank I'm sorry. You. That's all right. We have a motion, but no second. Second. Okay, we have a second. <laughs> Gorman. Yes. Couch. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Crump. Yes. Flores. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Got to see where I am. Perez. Yes. Prout. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Reyna. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. And Vasquez. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is the executive director's report again. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and board members. Last month I told you we would have a closed session this month uh, for my evaluation, but uh, Chairman Smith couldn't make it today. He asked me to postpone that till next month, so we will do that next month. In your folder uh, this evening is a timeline covering June, July, and August. And as it doesn't go out that far, but um, I know Michael mentioned it. If you can mark your calendars for October 16th, 17th, and 18th, the CTC, California Transportation Commission, will be here in town. So it's a, a, an opportunity to see how they operate. They literally. Um, distribute billions of dollars to transportation projects and transit projects uh, throughout the state. First time they've ever met in Bakersfield. And I've been trying to get them to come for 12 years. <laughs> I think it's the, the, the train ride that enticed them. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, a, uh, a flyer on the Cargo Community Prosperity Protection Study Public Informational Workshop. Oh, and I didn't mention this last month, but I did talk to you, um, some of you privately, about it. This 
the sheet I'm holding up is a spreadsheet like this. You know, uh, and this board has directed me and staff to capture as much money we, as we can from other regions. And you know that's something I push sta our staff here and push all of your staff. And I appreciate when I uh, share with you uh, project delivery issues. But if you look in detail, uh, at, as of the end of May, which I realize is uh, a few weeks old, we've already delivered in Kern County, in the Kern Cog area, 102% of our federal share. So that's a great statistic. A great statistic. I know Tehachapi um, requested more money, so we are on track again for fourth or fifth year in a row to deliver well over. 100% of our uh, federal money, and some of you that um, may not have been around for a while say, "Well, how do we how do we deliver more than 100%? We we get money from other areas of, of the state who can't use their money in time, and we get money from other areas in the country that can't use uh, their money in time. So, great job to staff, and uh, thank you." Uh, for allowing me to push uh, your staff as hard as I do to do this. And then finally, the was mentioned earlier in public comments, several flyers on community rides that Bike Bakersfield is doing for us around the, uh, around the county. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for Aaron? Seeing none and no closed session, we are adjourned. Thank you.